Welcome to the session today. What is Profit First and would it suit your firm? I'm delighted to have uh, Laura Elkislassi here, who is the CEO of Profit First Australia and New Zealand, who I talked to her earlier. <laughs> Needs an acronym or something. <laughs> That's very long. And um, uh, good to have you here, Laura. And, um, and also Dean Dunning, who is a friend of mine, Profit First advocate, um, and he's going to talk about it from a business owner's perspective, which I think is going to be really cool. So we'll get kicked off in just a second. Um, before we get started, just a bit of a bit of housekeeping. If you get stuck with any technical things, uh, Diane is also on the session from the Bazing team. She'll try and help you out with that. Um, we'll be recording the session and sending that out as well. So if you, you know, don't feel like you've got to remember everything. We'll summon up all in an email. We'll have Laura's contact details, and you know everything that we talk about will be will be there. Um, you can use the chat and the the Q and A to ask us a question. Um, we'll be keeping this nice and informal as we always do with these client sessions. So feel free to um, do that. And you know, if you want to type in the chat, tell me uh, where you're connecting from today. That'll be very cool. Um, me and Dean live in a tiny little town in the South Island of New Zealand. So not often you have people from Lake Arweer on, <laughs> on a webinar. Where, where are you calling them from, Laura? I'm currently in Melbourne at the moment. Nice. Very nice. All right, cool. Well, let's get kicked off. We'll, we'll, um, we'll keep this nice and short and sweet. So what we're going to do today is talk about what, what is Profit First and Profit First Professionals. Um, we, we've got Dean to sort of give you the business owner perspective on that because, you know, um, while I don't think you won't believe Laura, it's also it's always good to hear it from um, for, from a business owner who's actually doing that. Um, and then we're going to talk about a partnership between Biz Inc. and Profit First Professionals Australia and New Zealand, which is really cool. We've been working on this for a while, so I'm delighted to be able to announce that. And then. We obviously can answer any of your questions you've got um, about it as we as we go along. So let's get into it. Um, so thanks for being here, Laura. Um, we are um, going to talk about Profit First Professionals. I know you've got some slides, so I'll give um, control over to you. Um, but yeah, so if you can just give us a quick overview of, of Profit First, that's going to be really cool. And we can we can just chat through some questions as we go. So let me try and do this in the most seamless way possible. Or can, can you do that, Diane? Because I'll probably stuff it up. Looks like I've got share screen um, ability I'll, anyway. I'll so I will jump in. Uh, before I do, I just want to say hi. Um, I'm really excited to be here and um, I'm going to keep this short and sharp. I'm not going to drone on for ages about what Profit First is, but I do want to make sure that we're on the same page. So I'm going to share my screen and of course, share the right screen. And I just wanted to start off more by, I'm going to dive straight into it so that we are talking about what Profit First actually is. And it is not traditional accounting. And what I mean by that is a lot of the time business owners uh, are dealing with, with us accountants, bookkeepers, um, around their businesses and they don't understand what a profit and loss means, what a balance sheet means, why they made a profit and why there's tax and all of that. And so Profit First is really a system that breaks the traditional accounting formula. And the formula that I'm talking about is usually you've got your sales, less your expenses, which is your profit. And we, with in Profit First, don't ignore the human behavior and numbers around that. Instead, we're going to talk about what it means. What we've done is we say, you have your sales, you put your profit aside first and profit, and I just want to talk about profit, is not just pure profit as we know it, but it is the purpose for your business. So whether it's giving back, whether it's, you know, um, being able to do the long-term goals that you want, think of it as purpose if profit doesn't sit right. But what it is, what we're saying is that, 
if you put your profit first, then you have whatever's left over for your expenses. So it stops that overspending mentality that we can get into when we're like, oh, we just need to keep spending to grow and, and then maybe there'll be some profit left over. And the reason why I've got toothpaste tubes up is that Parkinson's law. So Parkinson's law basically states that whatever, and it's usually used with time, that whatever time we have is however long it's going to take us to do something. The same can be applied for money. If we have one bank account, we're going to then spend all the money in that bank account. And so if we consider for just one second, our toothpaste tube, when we get our first fresh toothpaste tube, we do the biggest dollops of toothpaste to brush our teeth. However, when you're getting right to the end of that tube, you will squeeze and twist and take as much as you possibly can for it from it before you can actually change it. And the same is with this profit first mentality, which is about having multiple accounts instead of one big account because whatever demand there is, is what we will do to, to meet that supply. And so um, I'm gonna move to this one for you. And it's this bank balance account accounting. Who here actually looks at their bank account most days? I know I do. What we need to do is work with our business owners and us as human beings. We need to be looking at our bank accounts and understand exactly what we can and can't spend. And that is what Profit First does. Instead of looking at formulas and reports and that sort of thing, and I'm not discounting any of that, but on a day-to-day -day basis, if we can open up our bank account and go, oh, I've got this money for my operating expenses, I've got money in my income account, I can pay myself this, that stress disappears. And so what we want to do is instead of changing habits, we're going to leverage them. And that is why we move to bank balance accounting. I'm going to just go straight to this slide here. There's lots of information I can dive into, but I don't want to take up too much time. This is from the book. And what we're basically saying so that we can get a bit numbers focused is let's start in this revenue range of 250,000, zero to 250,000. Whatever amount comes into our income account, so that 100%, then gets divided in percentages to these areas, the profit, the owner's pay, tax and expenses. And so it's very much like what it is to eat when we're trying to be on a diet. And so you have your main bank account, which is your income uh, plate, let's say in this example, 5% of that goes to profit, 50% to owner's pay, 15% to tax and 30% to expenses. So you open up your bank accounts and you see the dollar figures based on these percentages in there and know exactly what you can and cannot spend in your business. I can go into a lot more and I'm really happy to, but I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen so that um, I know that Matt has some questions for me. So I will allow some questions and I can jump back in. Hey, thanks, Laura. Um, first question I had um, would be, because this turns kind of traditional accounting on its head, have you found resistance from accountants and bookkeepers because it is not the way they've been trained? Absolutely. And I, I don't know if it's resistance. It's more being able to take off the accountant or bookkeeper hat and put the profit first hat on because we're trained in a specific way. And that, you know, from a compliance perspective, that's how it's done. But if we look at it as cash in and out and put on our profit first hat for a second and not worry too much about the, the detail of, you know, accounting practices and that sort of thing, it's almost too simple that it's like, well, how does this help? And so it really is um, the struggle comes from debunking all of what you've learned to work with what is actually happening with the cash in and out of the bank accounts. How, how did you first come across Profit First? <laughs> Good question. So I first came across Profit First um, I think it was when the book was first released and I read it and it resonated on, on many levels in terms of, you know, just getting into positions where I'm like, how did I ha not have money for this and that sort of stuff? And I'm like, all right, I'm going to give it a go. But being the skeptic that I am, I wanted to break the system versus, try, you know, I thought it was too good to be true, if I'm completely honest. And so I um, ended up implementing it in my own business first and it worked. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, you know, did all sorts of things. I tweaked the system and I did things that I thought would allow me to do better uh, that deviated from the system. And I actually got myself into some, you know, bits of difficult situations and that sort of thing. But then, you know, as soon as I went back to Profit First, it worked again. So that's how I came across Profit First. I implemented my business and then I became a Profit First professional through cool. the US. And your business is? Yeah, so I, um, I run multiple businesses. And so I implemented it in my, uh, my first baby business, which is now very old, um, Adroit Business Solutions. So bookkeeping and consulting. And then I implemented as well in our accounting, financial planning, uh, broking business as well. Yeah, cool. Um, what I think I might do is let me just, um, I'm going to quickly share my screen again only because I want to get my little hometown on, on a busy webinar. And, um, and I want to introduce Dean, who um, has kindly come onto the call. So Dean is one of my uh, long-term friends. We kind of, well, we don't really go rock climbing anymore because <laughs> we both had kids babies. in the last 12 months. <laughs> so that's it. But um, you can just about see Dean's house on there. I live in the same little um, place in New Zealand as, as this. And Dean's got a really successful business, which is right, started off as Wanaka Solar, which is the town, close to the town where we live in, now called Think Solar, multiple locations across the South, South Island of New Zealand, um, doing really well financially. Um, it's been awesome to see that business grow. And, um, you know, you read Profit First maybe five years ago, was it, Dean? And like, you know, yeah, something like that. I think you put yeah. me onto Mike's books. So I, I think I read one, maybe I read The Pumping Plan first. Yeah. Which I thought it was quite good. So I ended up reading that Profit First. Yeah. And, um, cool. Um, yeah, sorry. So, no, no, sorry to interrupt. And, 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 um, you know, fair to say you're a pretty strong advocate of it, right? Like uh, you love Profit First. <laughs> oh, I think it's awesome. I think it's yeah. like enabled our business to grow. Like it's gave us the confidence to grow and the cash reserves to grow. Yeah. Um, without that, I don't believe we would be in multiple locations across the island. Yeah, yeah. Um, I certainly noticed it with, with you. There was like, it, it just really changed how you, looked at the business you know and um and and really interesting to me was that like you know you had the tap turned off during the lockdowns last year which you know we were lucky not to have that as as a fully kind of remote and digital business but that um i don't well i think you were the opposite of stress like you actually enjoyed it right because you got some oh, work awesome. done <laughs> Yeah. But that was yeah. because I think you had a big cash reserve, right? And that was because of doing Profit First? Yeah, exactly. Like one of the attractions of Profit First was to try and build that cash reserve for a rainy day. Nobody knowing that COVID was going to come along and it was a, a really rainy day. Like our business got shut down for six weeks. We, we didn't sell a thing. Um, but with that cash reserve, that enabled us to just like, sit back and actually make some good decisions and do some good business development because we weren't in a, a rush to try and get working or try and change really fast. We could just mm -hmm. actually sit back and make some good decisions. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't stressful at all. And I, I'd put that down to profit first. Mm -hmm. Do you see that response from business owners, Laura? Is that the kind of thing? So it's not just a financial thing, but it's like a mental and sort of stress freedom that people are getting? It's definitely the impact is first from the emotional, mental um, stress side of things, because how often do business owners not sleep at night because they don't know if they're going to bring revenue in or if they can afford to do what it is they're hoping to do. And so, and that then trickles down to family and to health and all sorts of stuff. And so definitely the biggest impact and change is around the not having to worry and then the clarity piece of what is possible. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, we feel protected against like if um, if a market changes and, and demand for our product goes down, like again, a bit like the lockdown, we can stop and actually make some good decisions and good changes and not make any panic decisions. Mm -hmm. 
which is huge, right? Like I think making decisions from a position of confidence and like abundance versus like scarcity and fear mm. is one of the biggest things as a business owner, right? Like it's amazing, you know, and I, yeah. I'm old enough and done businesses enough that, you know, I sometimes know when I'm being negative to just be like, this is more how you think about the thing than the, the thing really is. But I see that with some business owners go into their shell and they start making terrible decisions and having like cash and knowing what's going to happen. It's just so uh, relaxing for want of a better word. Yeah. And as we've, um, we've set up more branches around the South Island, like, but again, that cash reserve, even though we haven't used it, it's gave us that confidence to say, oh, we can set up this new branch. And if anything goes wrong, we've got a bit of a buffer we don't feel like we're taking a big risk. The risk feels a lot smaller than it otherwise would. Mm. Well, well, I guess a question for both of you, but maybe you first, Laura, is do you think it helps people look at cash as, you know, just like a lever, a tool within the business rather than, you know, like looking at the bank account all the time? Because I think that's something I see with business owners is they don't understand like, you know, Having a cash reserve, it's not just the cash itself, but it is that sort of mental, it, it's a tool to make you do other things. Yeah. And so the biggest way that we look at that is where are you at in your, I guess, stress levels around business? Is it the, I need to just survive or is it I'm thriving? And then it's, you know, next level growth. Um, and what Profit First does is gets you out of that survival into thriving where you can then look at it and use it as a tool rather than a, it's dri your driving force of your decisions, if you know what I mean. Um, and once you're in, you know, you've got all of the foundations covered and it's just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you have oxygen and water and food, then you can start to move forward and make even better decisions. And I, I think that once you solve any issues with, with the implementing Profit First to get you out of that survival, then it becomes an, an awesome tool for growth. Yeah, cool. It also, I, I've only talked about the cash reserve, but because we split our revenue down into several different accounts, we also have like the wages account and the overheads account. So again, you can make better decisions because if, if our wage account's looking healthy, then we can say, well, can we employ an extra person or, or can we give our staff a pay rise? Um, uh, and with the overheads account, like can, do we have enough money to rent a new facility? Um, yeah, it's just way better for making decisions. Which is just budgeting, right? Like if you want to put it in yeah. old school kind of terms, right? It's budgeting, but that's saying, okay, like, you know, um, and then that leads back into planning. So it isn't just a cash thing. It's, it's actual like thinking about what you want your business to do. Um, I know that, um, you know, speaking to my CFO, who doesn't run profit first, but he said of all the systems he's seen, that's the one he said, like, if I were to recommend one to a, to, to a small business, that's what I'd recommend because, you know, if nothing else, it starts making people budget and go, you know, that's how much I should spend and not more than that or not just, oh, I've got a hunt. You know, we were talking about last night, then, you know, it's like a lot of the businesses around here are trades businesses because it's a huge boom. You know, I got a hundred grand in my, uh, in my bank. I'll, you know, there's a lake, I'll go and buy a jet ski and then, you know. The, 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 then the bill comes in and it's 99 grand or whatever and they're, yeah. they're in deep trouble and that's that's not a joke that's what really happens right yeah um so you kind of you put profit first into your business yourself and then you now have an accountant who you've kind of indoctrinated into profit first for one of a better for one of a better word like um but you and, and you actually left your ex accountant because they just didn't get on the same page with it right yeah they just couldn't see the value in it at all mm -hmm. um i think they were just so used to like reactive budgeting so you do your you do your year you do your p and l's and then see what you can budget for the next year mm -hmm. which you can um well you can get into trouble doing it that way because you don't know that you budgeted wrong until the year's over yeah. And um, so they, we just weren't on the same page yet. But um, our new, new accountant sees the value in it and thinks it's really good. That's cool. So do you think it would have helped you if you were working with like a profit first professional from the start? Do you think you'd have got it done quicker? 
oh, it would have been amazing. I wish I'd got shown profit first, like years before I actually read the book. Mm. Because like when you start in a small business, you do go to your accountant and you maybe you expect a bit much from your accountant, but you look to them as like sort of the person that knows about business mm-hmm. and you're looking for advice off them. And, I, and if they could equip you with some tools like Profit First, it would make all the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'd be super valuable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, do you think that everyone should read the book as well in conjunction? So maybe a question for you, Laura, you know, you, you know, you, you've got, um, you know, you've got Profit First Professionals go out working with clients. Do you encourage them to, to read the book? Sorry, their clients to read the book, you know, as they. So it depends. And I say this yeah. a lot. I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I think it depends on on what type of business owner you're dealing with. Um, mm. Some of them need a, you know, are, are read something, digest it, think about it, come back and they're ready to do something about it. And if that's the type of business owner that, you know, as an accountant or bookkeeper you're dealing with, then the book's a great introduction. It's very easy to understand. It's relatable. If you're listening to it as well, Mike's really funny. So it doesn't feel dry Mm. and cumbersome. Um, Whereas if, you know, I've got a number of clients who have never read the book, don't plan on reading the book. I haven't insisted they've read the book because what we do is we, we work out what are they trying to achieve? We can reverse engineer that. So looking at what, you know, revenue they can actually bring in versus what they want to pay themselves and what expenses there are and what the tax liability is going to be and then put that in place and then you tweak it as you go along and the book's not necessary. So it really depends on what you're trying to do and who you're working with. Yeah, good point. Actually, I love reading business books, but I know a lot of people just don't like reading books full stop. So, yeah, that's... Mm. uh, um, What's quite cool, and we'll talk about the partnership in a second, is that one of the things about being a profit first professional, you can give away two free chapters of the book. And that's what first brought my attention to it ages and ages ago. I saw it at one of our client sites. Like, that's really cool because it's great to have a lead magnet on your website and being able to give away what is like an absolute Amazon smash hit book. You know, if you go on there, which I did the other day, it's like 5,000 five star ratings. You know, I don't know how many people. Do you, are you, can we say how many people, I don't, I don't know, like how many people have read the book? Do, do um, we got to, no, he did tell me the other day, I can't remember, but it's like, um, I think it's something like 100,000 odd people in the last year. Like it's yeah, crazy wow. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. My dad's a publisher, so that is, yeah, that's big numbers for books <laughs> these yep. days. So, that, so you know, you, you get to leverage off, off that. And, you know, Mike McAlevitz, who wrote the book, is... How many books have you read them all, Dean? Like, how many has he done? Five, oh, six, he's got seven. I don't think I've got yeah. through them all yet. I've probably yeah. read six or seven, but he's got a couple more out. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's he's quite entertaining as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there are not many funny books about accounting, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that falls into that camp. Yeah, cool. So um, I guess the sum up being like, what have been, what would be like the kind of key things for you of doing profit first? What what would they be? Um, what are the key benefits or the yeah, the key, key benefits to your business? I guess you know, like you mentioned, one is obviously you know having that cash reserve makes you feel relaxed yeah. and comfortable and helps you make decisions. You know, yeah. what, what would be those, just to sum up, what would be those benefits to you and the benef- and your business? Yeah, def- definitely like relieving financial stress. Um, that's probably the biggest one. Um, also operational stress, like if we do have something like a lockdown, we, we don't have to panic and try and like find work for our workers. Um, yeah, they're, they're the main two really. Like mm-hmm. I... I And overall, I just think it's super valuable for business. And like you mentioned about budgeting, like it's just a way to force yourself to budget. Yeah. And and it's easy. It's easy as well. I mean, cash in the bank, right, is the, you know, I've done various small businesses is that's the thing that makes you feel good at night, isn't it? You know, and 
Um, and the opposite is true. And that's the thing is that, you know, all these business books you read, me and Dean always joke about like the e-myth, right? Everyone reads the e-myth. And like, I'm sorted now. That's it. Yeah. Just going to do some systems. Well, the e-myth is that no one's ever done the e-myth, right? No one's ever <laughs> fully got yeah. out of their business like that. Um, but what those books never tell you is, you know, what's business like when you're being punched in the face and you've mm -hmm. got a kid that woke you up at 4 a.m. And, you know, all these other yeah. things that happen. There's a good book called The Hard Thing About Hard Things, which is, you know, more, more uh, it, it is, it's a VC guy, but I just love the title, right? The hard thing about hard things is that they're hard, but business books are always written in a way that's like, um, you know, it, it makes it sound easy, right? Like they don't yeah. write, they don't have a good, because they want to sell a book. They don't want to make it sound hard, what they're suggesting. <laughs> so I think that thing of having cash in your bank and having a system that does that, that's what alleviates a lot of that worst part of being a business owner, isn't it? You know, you yeah. can actually enjoy running a business rather than be stressing because you got to pay the, you know, the tax. We didn't even talk about the, ta the tax part, right? There's like tax planning is built into it mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, all those things are built in. Well, I've experienced both sides of not doing profit first and doing it. And I wouldn't go back to not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool um thanks for that and, and laura so if if um anyone listening is interested in becoming a profit first professional what would you see the see the key benefits of uh that the program are and um and and we will talk about how they can kind of find out more about it in a minute yeah sure so i guess the the biggest thing is is we're a community of accountants bookkeepers and coaches that are on a mission to help small and large businesses and, and that's just a myth I want to debunk quickly a lot of people think profit first only works in small business and it doesn't it works in whatever size uh, business you've got it's just how it's implemented that changes and we're all on a mission to ensure that you don't have the stressed out business owner that they are profitable and that they're living their best life effectively so when you're in a group of like-minded people that helps you to keep taking that action and help more people. We also have um, in-depth education around Profit First and how to implement it and roll it out in all different businesses from different industries, as well as all of the resources, calculators, um, anything that you need from workshop stuff to um, actual assessment reports and tools and, and that sort of thing. So you get all of that. But we also have um, plenty of opportunity in a group environment to learn from others as well. We have um, Profit First professionals that have been around for five plus years, as well as, you know, um, newer people that are doing things a bit differently. And so you, you're constantly learning and you have content and resources and support uh, behind you. Um, and then it's a matter of, yeah, helping people in, in a way that works. And that's the game changer. Awesome. Thank you. Um, there's so much to cover. And I think we, we deliberately didn't, you know, could go overboard on it. I wanted to get Dean on because I think that's really the, the important thing to go. That's the results it can get for a business. And, you mm -hmm. know, you, you haven't got a small business now anymore, you know, so that's, um, mm. yeah, that, that's for sure. Um, so it does work. Um, one of the things that I first came across with Profit First, I said, was that lead magnet um, mm -hmm. on, on one of our client sites. And um, I thought that was really cool. So kind of connected with, with Mike and Ron, who runs the, the, the actual program, or, you know, Laura runs it in uh, this part of the world that um, Ron began it, I guess, in, in, in the States. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Um, and so I'm really pleased to announce that we've got a partnership because um, we already work with some first professionals and I, I can see that, um, you know, very enthusiastic people, um, very driven, um, you know, not to say that our, our other clients aren't, but it's really marked when we're working with profit first firms, how, you know, um, how driven they are, not just around profit first, but about growing their business and helping people. So, you know, I've been really keen to get this partnership happening. So keen to launch it. And um, this is one of our on screen is one of our clients in Tasmania who is, is already, um, you know, w working with us on both, both things. Um, and like one of the big ways the partnership is going to work is this kind of done for you marketing content. Um, so Profit First provides some awesome content um, 
that doesn't mean it ends up on bookkeepers and accountants websites <laughs> because we know for you guys your pain point is time right time around marketing it's not necessarily that you don't want to do it but it's the you know it's just finding that time so we're going to make that really easy with things like landing pages the lead magnets that i talked about drip marketing sequences email templates that's what i'm really excited about um um, and even specific copywriting for profit first firms. So we'll write, you know, make it really unique to, to, to you and your profit first journey. And there's a bunch more stuff in the pipeline. So um, I guess three, three things that are going to happen. Number one, if you're already a Bizink client and a profit first professional, then reach out to us at Bizink through the normal channels, either, you know, the chat window in your website or, um, just email support at bizincconline.com and we can talk about getting some of this stuff on your website. Um, if you are a Bizink client and you're interested in finding out more about Profit First Professionals, what's the best way to get those people through to you, Laura? Uh, the best way to do that is I'm going to drop a link um, shortly and there's a number of different ways that you can get in contact with us, whether it is to buy the book or speak to another Profit First professional who can help you with your own implementation, um, or you can book a call. Uh, we've got lots of information there. I'm just getting the grabbing the link, um, and yeah, we reach out. You have questions, we're really happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of ways. We also have our Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, where we speak to other Profit First professionals, other business owners, um, and experts as well. So yeah, hit us up and keep in contact. Sweet. And we'll send all this in a follow-up email as well. So if you, don't, if you don't copy it down, don't worry, we'll we'll do a follow-up. Um, uh, we've got time for a, a couple of questions. So does anybody have any questions for, for Dean and, or Laura about kind of obviously Dean on the what it's like to run a business with Profit First or, or for Laura, anything about the Profit First Professionals program? Just use the chat window or um, or the Q&A if, if you want to um, do that. Um, I um I had a quick question for you, Laura, which was when I was thinking about was I'm guessing that like probably the, the immediate opportunity with profit first for for a lot of firms would be their existing clients, you know, rather than like a, a new business coming in. Um, when do you think is it is the best time to introduce profit first to an existing client? Okay, so that's a great question. Yeah, it's way easier with your existing clients because you have a relationship with, with them and they trust you. Um, and the, the easiest time to introduce it is with your own experience about something. So you're not necessarily going to say, hey, I'm doing this service, um, buy it from me. But instead, it's I am doing this in my own business. This is the learning. This is how I've managed to change things for myself, follow me along the way. And we find that from there, the conversation start, people open up and they're like, well, if you're doing it yourself, then I should really be doing this. Um, and then the conversation is really organic from there into how you can help them. And with accountants anyway, you're having conversations at tax time. And so that's a perfect opportunity. When mm -hmm. someone asks you about a particular challenge with from a cash flow perspective, that's another opportunity. The opportunities are really endless. Yeah, that's cool. Because one of the, I mean, it's been the kind of like mantra around the profession about like business advisory, which is a term I kind of hate because mm -hmm. it, I feel it's like means everything and nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, no, I don't imagine any business owner has ever gone to account and gone, can you give me business advisory? You know, it's, it's not <laughs> how you think, right? You, you know, you just usually want a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. What I like about profit first as from a, I'm a marketing guy is that it's a thing, right? Like you've got a thing you can go with profit first, the thing, it's a book. Mm -hmm. It's a, so you've got a thing you can go and market and sell on rather than, you know, business advice, which is this vague thing that no one's ever quite, you know, defined the same way yet you know, every coach to the profession has been talking about it forever. So that, that's the thing I think is really strong from a marketing perspective. Absolutely. Um, one final one, I would just be, do you have any suggestions, Laura, on how to price that work? Because I know people will be thinking about that. Um, you know, which part is, is free, which part is, you know, th th does that come up with, with firms you're working with? This is the question that everyone asks. And I think it's a, it's a big struggle in business generally. So 
Um, I love answering that question. And I think that's the, one of the key benefits to working um, as a profit first professional is that you are given really clear guidelines around these are free resources, let, you know, use them in this way, leverage them, share them freely. Um, and then we've got a very clear systematic way to roll out profit first on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And so an example, and I'm going to give an, an example here is um, a profit first assessment, a meeting, and then an implementation and rollout plan that happens over three, six, 12 months. The, if, you, if you're working with smaller business up to, let's say, the $250,000 revenue, um, that report and, and initial meeting is, starts from $1,500 and goes up depending on what um, you're trying to achieve for them. So the, because the reason why it's that is the impact that they have in their business. They've literally got a map that they can follow to get to their goals and ensure that the stress of cash um, flow problems isn't there um, and that's one example and then we've got other people that do it as a module in a course and so the pricing around that you get assistance um, to be able to price your whole course or that module itself others do workshops and so it's you know is it an intro to that can be free versus something that is a deep dive to help people in a group environment um, roll that out and that you know can be a couple of hundred per person it just depends on what it is you get to craft that offering with the support and resources, and then um, you get one-on-one -on -one support to price it based on your business and your clients. Yeah, cool. Um, very wise pricing person who did a lot of work with um, accounts and bookkeepers once said to me, well, I go in and you know, I can look at it a lot, but my general advice is double your prices. <laughs> 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 and we can do that quickly or we can go through a load of stuff and I'll still come to the same conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was quite funny. Oh, well, hey, let's wrap it up there. We've come up to just over half an hour. Um, I'd love to talk about this more, but we'll send a follow-up email. And I think with that link, Laura, people can really find out more and delve in Beautiful. and get the book and all that kind of stuff. And you'll be hearing a lot more about this partnership over the next um, few months. Um, thanks very much, Laura. Thanks, Dean, for um, yes. taking the time to, to, to come on. Thanks and uh, thanks for everyone for, um, yeah, for, for, for coming along and listening today. So. Yeah. Um, enjoy Thanks, the rest of your day. Thanks, yeah. Laura. Cool. Thank you. Take care. See you later. See ya.